Hey everybody, so you may have uh, heard the news that the new anti-AI software Glaze has just been released to the public and um, this video will be my first impressions of me testing Glaze and uh, comparing it to some common AI uh, models. So um, Bear in mind that I am not a computer scientist, but I am fairly tech savvy and uh, I've been in the computer graphics industry as an artist for over 10 years. So uh, this new tool um, sounds great and uh, what it does is it aims to basically uh, cloak an image that you input uh, into something else completely and then when the uh, AI models try to train your images um, it basically gets confused and uh, basically uh, it trains itself on some um, random image and uh, yeah so let's get to it so this is the program and you can download it via their website where are we? Here. So this is Glaze. Glaze. And uh, yeah, basically uh, I recommend you to go on here. Just have a quick read. There's not much on there. Uh, you can read the actual research paper on their website, which is uh, pretty, uh, which is much more in depth anyway. But uh, yeah, for this video, I'll be just quickly covering my first impressions. So you go to their website and you can download it by clicking this link here in the download section. You can download it, I think, uh, let's see, for Mac and Windows, Macintosh and Windows. Yep. So I'm using Windows, so I download the Windows uh, package. Now bear in mind that after you download the, uh, the program, it actually needs to go online and download uh, models uh, that it needs to run uh, for the first time and that's uh, a fairly big download so I think it was about five gigabytes of download um, that you that that it, uh, it fetches so um, I've already done that uh, but yeah just bear that in mind if the program doesn't work your firewall may be blocking the connection to the internet for the program and yeah once it downloads everything and you launch the program, it should look like this. So this is a fairly easy uh, interface for now. And one of the requests or feedbacks that I've given to the Glaze team is that we need a little bit more advanced settings for people that want to tweak and understand more and be able to customize what's going on under the hood. Uh, right now, you basically select an image I'm going to be using my Confessor painting that I um, recently finished. As an example, you select an image and then you define the glaze settings. So it's basically just two sliders for now. It's either very low, so the intensity, so this is the amount of the visual artifacts that you see on the image, it goes from very low to very high. And I'll show you some three examples that are the, of the tests I did, which is really interesting, by the way. Uh, and the render quality. So the lowest or the fastest uh, render setting is um, under 20 minutes. So from my tests for this, uh, for this particular image, it was about 5 to uh, 10 minutes to render one image, guys. Okay, so it does take computing power. And I've got a fairly good computer as well, CPU. Uh, this doesn't run on the GPU, which is good, but yeah, on the CPU, runs on the CPU, uh, I think uh, I've got an i7, and uh, yeah, it takes takes about 5 to 10, 10 minutes on the fastest, on the fastest setting, um, for one image, again. Okay, so you set your settings, and for my, for my test, I just set it to medium and fast, and then you basically tell it to uh, a location for the output and it basically renders out the image in that directory. 
and what it does is uh, well let's do a preview first so you can press the preview button and that's like a really quick preview generation of it and you can see what it does is actually adds these rainbow oily artifacts over your entire image now this is just the preview uh, the final image is I'll show you here I've rendered out three final images uh, and basically the uh, the three variations are intensity on the slider so we have uh, intensity of one intensity of three in the middle and intensity of five so let's have a quick look at the outputs okay so this is the intensity of one and I'm going to just go view actual size. So the actual pixel size of this image is um, 2048 in height. So it's a fairly high-ish resolution image. And on the intensity of one, you don't really notice too, too much changes. Uh, you do see some weird artifacting, oily, rainbowy effect here. And then if we go to intensity of three, so this is uh, intensity of three, and you can start to see that even in the middle setting, intensity setting, uh, you start to see the artifacts appear on your image. And this is, bear in mind, this is just the middle setting. Okay, and then this is the preview. And then this is the uh, highest intensity settings. And you can see it really messes up the image, guys. So this is, based, this is really a drawback of the program is that uh, it really does mess up the, the, the look of the, the visual uh, aesthetics of the image if you decide to go for the higher setting. And again, in the mid middle setting, it really messes up the image as well. Now, let me just load the uh, the raw. And we can do a side by side comparison. Okay, so uh, this is the intensity three. So. Let's just use the middle intensity to compare it. Okay, so this is a middle intensity and this is the raw image. So yeah, you can see that it really does mess with the final look of the image visually to the naked eye. And this is uh, if you want just middle, medium uh, protection. Uh, and in my opinion, it's at this stage in time, if you are trying to sell your art online, uh, you want to present it in the best possible way, right? So having these visual distortions on your image, in my opinion, is not really worth it. Um, but it's totally up to you. And, you know, if you're just sharing images on the social media, you don't really care about the, the quality that your followers see, um, then, yeah, you might choose to use, uh, use this type of protection. But at the moment, uh, for me, I probably won't be utilizing it, especially since it takes about, uh, you know, five to ten minutes to process each image. And I'm assuming that the higher resolution the image, the, the more processing time it takes. I am hoping that in the future that uh, they keep updating the program so the, uh, the visual, um, visual noise or artifacts that Glaze generates um, is not so obtrusive to the naked eye, but it still messes up the AI, AI training model. Um, the other test that I did was uh, I wanted to try and test to actually to test the actual results of the uh, 
the uh, cloaked or glazed image. And uh, using this website, it basically uh, runs your image through one, two, three, four, five, five different AI uh, algorithms uh, that basically tries to uh, turn your image into words. And I was hoping that, um, you know, the cloaked images would uh, give a different result um, than the raw image. But from my test, um, using, using this particular model, uh, it doesn't seem to work. <laughs> so maybe it's just uh, useful for Diffusion models or, or uh, image training models like stable diffusion, mid journey, DALI, etc. But uh, it doesn't guard against clip, um, so image to text models. Uh, I don't know. From reading the website, uh, it, it's supposed to guard against um, image to text, but yeah, if I can show you quickly the the test that I did. So on the left side here, I inputted the raw image and this is what that gives me. So basically a painting of a skeleton in a yellow robe, uh, a painting of a person with a hood on it, an oil painting of an old man praying. So that's all, you know, that these AI programs basically look at this image and then generate text based on this image basically tell you, telling you what it is. It's pretty accurate, right? <laughs> it's pretty scary how good these things are. Right? So an oil painting of an old man praying, that's uh, pretty legit. Or this one, a painting of an old woman in a hood. Now, this is using the raw image. On the right hand side, uh, I input the intensity 3 glazed image and ran the uh, AI again and basically gave me the same result. So, maybe I'm doing it wrong, I don't know. But uh, currently, it doesn't seem to guard against um, image to te text uh, AI algorithms. Okay, so I'll, I'll share this image for you. And the, here is a link to, to go and test that. Uh, and you can have a look at it for yourself. And basically, this is the raw compared to the glazed, and again, you can see that oily, visually artifact on the image. Um, so yeah, for now, this is just the first impressions. I've only been playing with, with it for about uh, two hours or so, just testing out things and testing out the render settings and, and things like that. And um, I'd love to hear your thoughts. But for now, I probably won't be investing the time to... Uh, for, to, to uh, click my images. I don't know. I've requested some more ability to test the outputs um, from the Glaze development team. So it's just some way that uh, artists can actually test the outputs against uh, these AI models just to verify that it is working. Because I don't want to be spending 10 minutes each time I want to post an image on the internet just, just to glaze it and for it to not work. I don't know. I'm sure it works because I'm sure these guys are really smart and they know what they're doing. But uh, I personally need to be able to, or want to be able to verify these results myself. That's, that's just me. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, as always, keep creating and be happy.